Are you ready to elevate your software development process? Welcome to our journey through the world of Kanban, where we'll unlock the secrets of efficiency, productivity, and team collaboration. Our mission today is to share with you 10 best practices that will transform your software development process. Each practice is a stepping stone, a tool to refine your methods and streamline your workflow. So, get ready to embrace a whole new level of project management prowess. Stay tuned as we unveil the first practice that will set you on the path to Kanban mastery. Our journey begins with the first practice, visualizing the workflow. Picture a software development team, let's call them Team Alpha. They were a hard-working bunch but something was off, projects were delayed, tasks were falling through the cracks, and overall productivity was down. Then they decided to make a change. They began by creating a visual representation of their work and workflow. They used a Kanban board to map out each step of their process, from to do, to done. Suddenly everything became clear. Bottlenecks were easily identified and tasks weren't simply forgotten or overlooked anymore. The visualization allowed Team Alpha to see their workflow from a bird's eye view, making it easier to manage and optimize. This clarity led to better communication, improved productivity, and ultimately, a higher quality of work. So remember, visualizing your workflow is the first step towards a more transparent and efficient software development process. Next up we have a game changer, limiting work in progress. Picture a software development team swamped with tasks and losing sight of the big picture. They're juggling too many balls and, inevitably, some are dropping. The quality starts to slip, deadlines are missed, and stress levels rise. Now imagine the same team decides to limit their work in progress. They focus on a few tasks at a time, allowing them to pay full attention to each task, enhancing the quality of their work. The team starts to deliver faster, not because they're working harder, but because they're working smarter. They've cut down on the time spent switching between tasks and reduced the risk of errors. They've gained control over their workflow and created a more sustainable pace of work. By limiting your work in progress you can focus more effectively and deliver faster. Now, let's move towards the third practice, managing flow. Imagine a software development team stuck in a rut, with tasks piling up and progress slowing down. They decided to take control to manage their flow. And what does that mean? Simply put, it's the movement of work items through the production process. By focusing on their flow, the team began to see where work was getting stuck, where bottlenecks were forming. They could see that some tasks were taking longer than others, causing a backlog that slowed everything down. So, they started to make changes, adjusting their process to ensure that work could flow more smoothly. The result? They became more efficient, more productive. Their delivery times improved, their customers were happier. They were no longer just reacting to problems, but proactively managing their work. That's the power of managing flow. It's about understanding your process and making it work for you. Managing flow allows you to deliver value to your customers in a steady, predictable manner. Fourth on our list is making process policies explicit. In the world of software development, clear communication is key, and that includes having explicit process policies. Imagine a team where everyone is working hard, but they're all following different strategies. The result? A chaotic mess of misaligned efforts. Now think about a team that improved their process by making their policies explicit. Suddenly there's clarity. Everyone knows their role, their responsibilities, and the steps to follow. It's like having a shared compass, guiding everyone in the same direction. Let's take the example of code review. Without an explicit policy, the process can be haphazard, leading to missed bugs and inconsistent coding practices. But with a clear policy in place, each line of code gets the attention it deserves, and the team maintains a high standard of work. That's the power of making process policies explicit. Clear and explicit process policies ensure everyone is on the same page. Fifth and halfway through, we have implementing feedback loops. Let's imagine we're part of a software development team. We're competent, we're diligent, but somehow, we're always playing catch up. Our projects are often delayed, and we're not quite sure why. Then, we decide to implement feedback loops. Think of feedback loops like a living, breathing conversation between our process and us. Every step we take, every decision we make, we're asking our process, how did that go? What can we do better? And our process, through metrics and measurements, is answering us back. So, we start to measure, analyze, and discuss everything. We make changes, and then we measure the impact of those changes. Like a detective, we're following the clues, tracing back the cause of our delays and making necessary adjustments. 
Soon we notice a shift. Our projects are more predictable, our team is more confident, and our clients are more satisfied. Feedback loops allow for continuous improvement and adaptation. Last but definitely not least, we have improving collaboratively, evolving experimentally. In the realm of software development, the notion of improving collaboratively and evolving experimentally is more than just a fancy phrase. It's the bedrock of advancement. Let's take a journey through the narrative of a software development team who embraced this concept and transformed their process. Imagine a team, diligently working, but constantly finding themselves entangled in the web of inefficiency. They realized the need for change. Instead of relying on a single manager for improvements, they decided to democratize the process. Every team member, regardless of their role, became an integral part of the solution. They started sharing ideas, discussing issues openly, and brainstorming solutions together. This collaborative improvement led to innovative solutions that were much more than the sum of their parts. But they didn't stop there. They also adopted an experimental mindset. They began to test new ideas and methods not fearing failure, but rather embracing it as an opportunity for learning and growth. The team started implementing small changes, observing the results, learning from them, and iterating their processes accordingly. This continuous cycle of testing, learning, and evolving became their modus operandi. As a result, they not only improved their software development process, but also fostered a culture of shared responsibility and continuous learning. Their story is a testament to the transformative power of collaborative improvement and experimental evolution. Remember, continuous collaborative improvement is the heart of every agile process. And that's a wrap on our journey through Kanban best practices. We've charted the course, visualized workflows, limited work in progress, managed flow, made process policies explicit, implemented feedback loops, and improved collaboratively while evolving experimentally. These are not just steps but a philosophy to embrace. A change that could revolutionize the way you work. Start your Kanban journey today and watch your software development process transform.